in NCAC sports fans and welcome back to another episode of This Week in the NCAC. I'm your host, Russell Kramer. On this show, we'll offer a complete update for all the upcoming NCAC fall sports tournaments and championship races. Fans, please note that due to recent impact from Superstorm Sandy, the semifinal games for field hockey and men's and women's soccer have been pushed back one day and will be now be contested on Thursday, November 1st. Championship games for all three contests will still be contested on Saturday, November the 3rd. In field hockey, DePaul successfully navigated a perfect conference schedule for just the fifth time in league history to earn its first ever outright NCAC championship. Wittenberg leads the league with 10 titles all time, while Denison, Ohio Wesleyan, and Worcester each have won eight. Oberlin has two, and Kenyon has one. DePaul and Denison will enter the 2012 NCAC tournament as the top two seeds for the second straight year after the two teams met in the tournament championship a season ago. The DPU Tigers will host fourth-seeded Ohio Wesleyan in a semifinal contest at 3 p.m. on Thursday afternoon. DePaul earned a pair of shutout victories over Ohio Wesleyan during the regular season. The other semifinal contest will feature second-seeded Denison, hosting third-seeded Worcester at 3 p.m. on Thursday afternoon in Granville. The Big Red and the Scots split a pair of contests during the regular season. The Field Hockey Tournament Championship match is set for Saturday at the site of the highest remaining seed emerging from the semifinal round. In women's soccer, Wittenberg earned its second North Coast Championship with a pair of wins last week. The Tigers defeated DePaul 2-1 and Kenyon 2-0 to collect their second all-time title. Ohio Wesleyan leads the league with nine titles all-time, followed by Denison with eight, Allegheny with seven, Worcester with five, Wittenberg with two, and Kenyon with one. Wittenberg will enter the 2012 NCAC tournament as the top seed after picking up a 2 0 triumph over Kenyon in the regular season finale on Saturday. The Tigers will host fourth seeded DuPaul in a semifinal contest at 7 p.m. on Thursday evening. Wittenberg earned a 2-1 triumph over the Tigers in Springfield in the regular season meeting between the two squads on October 23rd. The other semifinal contest will feature second-seeded Worcester hosting third-seeded Denison at 2 p.m. on Thursday afternoon in Worcester. The Scots defeated the Big Red 2-0 in their regular season meeting back on October 6th. The Women's Soccer Tournament Championship match is set for Saturday at the site of the highest remaining seed to emerge from the semifinal round. And in men's soccer, Ohio Wesleyan earned its fifth straight North Coast Championship with a pair of wins last week. The Battling Bishops defeated Kenyon 2-0 and Denison 2-1 to collect their league-leading 21st conference title. Kenyon has won the second most conference crowns with six, followed by Worcester with three, Denison with two, and Wittenberg with one. The Battling Bishops enter the NCAC tournament as the top seed and will host fourth-seeded Kenyon on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. in a rematch of last week's contest that saw Owu come away with a 2-0 victory. Second-seeded DePaul will host third-seeded Hiram in the other semifinal match at 6 p.m. on Thursday. Since joining the NCAC last year, the DPU Tigers are a perfect 3-0 against the Terriers with three one-goal victories, including a 2-1 overtime thriller in last year's NCAC tournament semifinal. The men's soccer tournament championship game is set for Saturday at the site of the highest remaining seed to emerge from the semifinal round. The 2012 NCAC Volleyball Tournament will also be contested this weekend, November 2nd and 3rd at Wittenberg University in Springfield, Ohio. As league champions, Wittenberg earned the number one seed and the right to host the volleyball tournament at Pam Evans Smith Arena. Beginning in 2012, the NCAC Volleyball Tournament will be a top eight two-court format with quarterfinal matches on Friday and semifinal consolation semis finals and first place matches being played on Saturday. 4 p.m. quarterfinal matches on Friday include number three Hiram versus number six Ohio Wesleyan and number four Denison versus number five Worcester. While 7 p.m. matches on Friday will feature number one, number one Wittenberg versus number eight Oberlin and number two DePaul versus number seven Allegheny. 
Saturday, Saturday will begin with Constellation semifinal matches at 10 a.m. and continue with semifinal matches at noon, seventh and fifth place matches at 3.30, the third place match at 5.30, and finally, the tournament championship match at 7.30. Fans, as a reminder, the winner of all four fall sports tournament be being contested this weekend will earn the league's automatic bid in their respective NCAA tournament fields. Be sure to tune into next week's show as we will reveal where the NCAC tournament winners have landed and their respective NCAA tournament brackets. Finally, we'll close out this week's show by taking an in-depth look at the exciting race that has taken shape in NCAC football gridiron. Following last weekend's results, four teams find themselves deadlocked at the top of the league standings with identical 4-1 conference records, including Kenyon, Ohio Wesleyan, Wabash, and Wittenberg. Kenyon hosted Allegheny on Saturday and spotted the Gators a first quarter touchdown, but the Lords then rattled off three unanswered second quarter touchdowns en route to a 20-7 victory over the Gators. Wittenberg kept pace to top the league standings with a 45-27 triumph over Denison on Saturday in Granville. Freshman tailback Jimmy Tahiki rumbled for 137 yards and three touchdowns to lead the off offense, while junior linebacker Spencer Lino piled up 17 tackles, including one and a half tackles for loss and half a sack. Wabash ensured the race at the top of the standings remained intact as the Little Giants knocked off previously unbeaten Ohio Wesleyan 28 to nothing in Delaware on Saturday. The shutout marked the first time since 1983 that the Little Giants have spotted back-to-back -back shutouts in a season. Senior quarterback Chase Belton threw for 235 yards and three touchdowns, including the longest pass of his career on an 82-yard scoring strike to sophomore Houston Hodges to lead the Wabash offensive unit, while junior linebacker Nate Scola garnered NCAC Defensive Player of the Week laurels after racking up 10 tackles, three tackles for loss, and one and a half sacks. Scola also helped ensure the shutout with a key tackle on fourth and goal at the one-yard line on Owu's opening drive of the game. Tapal earned its first NCAC win in program history with a 27-16 victory over Worcester. Junior running back Armani Cato earned NCAC Offensive Player of the Week honors after carrying the rock for 20, 20, 21 times for 111 yards and two scores to help lead the DPU Tigers to victory. In the final league contest of the weekend, Oberlin blanked Hiram 39 to nothing. Yeoman senior Clay Eaton recorded two and a half sacks in the game, becoming the program's all-time single season sack leader. Eaton currently sits at 15 sacks on the season and surpassed former Yeoman great Chris Pisani, who racked up 13 and a half sacks in 2005. Fans, be sure to tune in to next week's episode for an update on NCAC football action, as there will be, again, five league games on the schedule this coming Saturday, November 3rd. For up-to-date news, stats, standings from around the North Coast Athletic Conference, be sure to log on to our website, www.northcoast.org. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter, at NCAC, as well as like us on Facebook. For the entire conference staff, I am your host, Russell Kramer, and thanks for watching.